This is amplifier number three. That's my designation. And apparently the only markings on it are either nothing or uh, JLH. Well, probably no markings at all. We'll look at it. It's a kit. It's on, instead of a square board, it's on a rectangular board. And there's two of them. The kit included two, a left and a right. That's the output capacitor. I believe this to be the input capacitor. They provided insulating pads, but did it provide hardware? No, just the insulation pad. And here we have two of everything else. This is the seller's page, although I've forgotten to include his name. When I go back upstairs, I'll get it and mark it down. And it is called, a, well, in the advertisement, it's called a JLH 1969 10-watt Class A amplifier kit. Very little said in description. Uh, standard circuit, standard official voltage and current rating, 10 watts, 8 ohm load. And he's approximately right. He said 24 volts. and. 1.2 amps. I think JLH would have said 29 and 1.2 or 3. And I don't know what this is, but some sort of a power transistor. As before, I've done a schematic. Pretty straightforward, a standard 100K by 100K voltage divider, uh, 39K up here, one microfarad in. This designer did read the document, half watt and one watt, so we don't have any that I can see. Variable resistors. And here we have something I've not seen before, a 10 ohm one watt resistor and a one microfarad bypass capacitor. So this is going to cause the high frequency outputs to roll off greatly. If this is a 10 ohm resistor, we only have an 8 ohm load. This designer is anticipating dropping a quarter or a half a watt at whatever frequency this is active. That'll be interesting to look at. Everything's pretty straightforward. I guess there's no identification on the board because I didn't note it. Of course, I could have forgot. And I've got a bill of materials the same way. A close look at the board and we note that there is no identifying board number or anything. I do like very much the fact that these uh, board connectors, which will appear here. Well, now that I like the connector, I don't like the fact that it covers up the in and out. Look at that. There is a little tiny out there, a little tiny plus there and a little tiny in over here, but the, why would he mark these in big letters and then cover them? What I was going to say is I do like these clamp type terminals as opposed to the box terminals. They actually have a lifter and a clamp. 
interesting that the intermediate transistors a little heavier than Leslie Hood would have used. It's a little thermally bigger case. So without looking at actual values of resistors, this looks pretty close to the JLH amplifier described in the article. So we'll just proceed to assemble that. I've completed building the kit. Uh, there were no surprises. It's a simple little kit. They did provide additional holes for the input capacitor. Actually shows an electrolytic shape on the silk screening, but this is a probably a polyester or some sort of film capacitor. So you have some flexibility if you want to change this capacitor. I did not put in the 10 ohm 1 watt resistor. That's this resistor. I'm going to test the amplifier without it and then see what effect installing it has. As discussed earlier, JLH did not show this, but who knows. As the transistors, like the power transistors here, or the other ones we've used, the TIP 41C. They're designed to be mounted like this. Or, you could, of course, install them like that and bend them flat. Or, you could put the transistors on a heat sink and mount this this way there is one of these amplifiers it's actually a stereo amplifier where these transistors are mounted on the end two here and two here and the circuit board is wider from the photograph I don't believe that this end is much wider than the rest of them. Here it's a little bit wider. I believe this heat sink's designed to have the transistors or whatever heat generating device you have mounted onto the thick part. And then it heat flows into the fins. If you mount them onto this fin here, onto the face of the fin, it should be this thick and it's not. That leads to a couple of problems. You cannot get very many threads in here. Of course, you could reach down in here somehow, maybe, and put a nut in, but that's usually there's not enough room. And this doesn't conduct heat as well as this thick mass of heat. So you're looking at conducting heat up from here up, around the corner, and back down. So. I could see installing them like this on top maybe or installing them from the bottom and then bending them out flat. There are cases, enclosures, on eBay where the two ends are actually made of heat sink material. Or maybe two ends in the back are made out of heat sink material, which allows the transistor to be mounted on the external wall of the enclosure. Something to think about when you finalize the build. I'm going to install the transistors this way because it's a habit. Completed and powered up with the same test setup I've used before. The current is what it is because it's not adjustable. I ran up to 24 volts, well, 24 and 3 quarters, and I got 0.8 amps. I measured the X point, which should be around well, 12.4. Now it's up to 12.07. So that's not bad. It's supposed to be equal to this divided by 2 give or take a half a volt. Looking at the oscilloscope and driving it with 0.68 millivolts RMS 
Uh, JLH would have said 0.66, I think. We'll not quibble over that. The output RMS is 9 volts, which is exactly 10 watts. So far, so good. We're still looking at the same 50 hertz that we saw in the article illustration. We're now looking at 50 kilohertz. And there's a little artifact right here. Rise time's pretty good, fall time's real good. Right here. So let's go to uh, 1 kilohertz. Well, that looks just fine. Output still 9 volts, RMS. 10 kilohertz. You see a little ditzy here, little tiny ditzy. Everything looks kosher. It's just exactly what JLH would predict. I'll solder the 10 ohm resistor in and run these same tests again. All right, I've soldered in the 10 ohm resistor. There's really not much difference I can see at uh, 50 hertz. We'll go to 50 kilohertz. I really don't see any difference there. Let's go back to 1000 hertz. That's 1000 hertz. The output is uh, Still 9 volts, which is 10 watts exactly. 10 kilohertz. Looks just fine. So that should complete amplifier number 3. And in my next and probably last video of this series, I'll do amplifier number 4. If you stuck around this long, thank you very much. Give me a thumbs up if you would. Uh, subscribe and comment. Thank you.